everyone. Welcome to Raymond Melbourne Online Church. Now I'm Pastor John. And I'm Pastor Eileen. And so we just pray that you have a great day, yes. that you really enjoy the program. So stay tuned and God bless. Well, let's find out what's on at Rhema this week. Um, all programs can be watched on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, that is free. There is no cost. And also, please just like our Facebook page. If you need help or you need prayer support, please just contact us. Contact us at the church. Uh, you can do that via the website, ramafamilychurch.org. Dot au, or you can call or you can message the church. Now, uh, also something exciting coming up, we've got Christmas carols and that will be December the 20th. Uh, that will be at 10 a.m. Uh, live at our Rhema Doncaster Church. So please come, come along and jo uh, join us. Uh, invite some people to come along. There'll be highlight songs, singing Christmas carols. We've got some uh, free hampers that we want to give away to people that have needs. So we look forward to seeing you come and enjoy us and have some fun and fellowship together. Uh, Eagle's Prayer, that is every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. So come and have a Holy Ghost a prayer meeting with us. They are just such good meetings. A healing meeting, there will be no online healing meeting in January, but the healing meeting, we have a healing meeting once a month and that will res resume again the first Wednesday in February. Now, Christmas hampers, uh, this is part of our food care program. Every year we put hampers together for people that have need over Christmas. Now you can be a part of this awesome opportunity by sowing financially into Rhema Bank Account. And when you do that as a support uh, to, to help support these hampers, just in your giving, just mark that as hampers. You can also financially support our food care program as we give out uh, food to people in need on a weekly basis. And the last thing is that we have a, a, a need for a new Apple laptop and that will cost us somewhere around about, uh, it, well, it will cost us $3,800. Now you can be a part of blessing the church. We have need for this uh, laptop. ASAP is our current laptops are ready to be replaced. And so again, just mark that offering as laptop. So God bless and we'll see you soon. Good morning, everyone. We're going to receive our church tithes and offerings. So I'm reading from Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. So how about we read that together now? Bring you all the tithes. Now, what is a tithe? Tithe is a tenth of all our gross income. So bring all, all of the tithe into the storehouse. What's the storehouse? Well, this is a storehouse for you uh, as you hear and receive the word that there may be meat 
or provision within the church. And prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. So God, through the tithes, through the offerings, he opens up the windows of heaven and he pours out a blessing for you and for me, for us. Amen. And so uh, there are different ways that you can give. Uh, you can give through FPOS, online deposits. All the details are just below. Uh, you can go to our website and get the details on ramafamilychurch.org.au. Uh, on the website, you can pay via Tithely or you can download the Tithely app and you can pay via the app. So let's pray over our tithes and offerings and let's do it with a great expectation that we're going to give into God's work and we're going to receive for our faithfulness. And Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithes and offerings and even as we do so, it opens up the windows of heaven for us. And you pour out great blessings upon our life. That even as we give it, it shall be given back to us a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into our bosom. So Father God, we just thank you that for the finances that goes towards the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Again, welcome to Rhema. We're really blessed that you've joined us today. And we're excited, you know, the Lord has given us a word that we started teaching last week on the blessing or on the increase of God. And he spoke to my heart and he said through the middle of last week and maybe a little bit before that it's time for the blessing, time for the increase. And when he said that, he kind of referred back to what I'd been teaching myself on when Elijah called for the rain. And the reason that he started to call for that rain was that the Lord said to him, it's time for the rain. And in 1 Kings 18 and 1 Kings 19, it tells us that Elijah went up to Mount Carmel and he began to, you know, sit in a, in a certain place to pray and start calling that rain to come. And we can tell that he was expectant of it coming because he kept sending his servant up there to look for that rain, that he fully expected it to come. So even when his servant came back numbers of times and said, I don't see anything, he wasn't moved by what he couldn't see because God had already spoken to him. And the Lord said to me, it's time for increase. It's time for the blessing. And I began to ponder on that a little bit, even before I come out to minister this morning. You know, everything with God comes with a sound, with a word, something that he brings to us. Remember with the disciples, he told them to go and pray and wait in the upper room uh, for the spirit to come. And remember when the spirit did come in Acts 2, he came with a sound. And everybody that gave attention to that sound and responded to what the Spirit was doing at that moment was filled. That's what Acts 2 tells us. So I began to ponder on that a little bit because I thought, Father, you have come with more than one sound because you had a song written about the blessing. You had them begin to bring that song to the body of Christ so that we started to sing about the blessing. The Lord bless us, the Lord keep us. So you, you've brought that to us. And now with us, especially as a local church, you've, you're bringing our attention to the blessing and to the increase of God. And we need, just like Elijah did, to respond to it.
to respond in prayer, to respond with our confession to the word, or we can say to the sound that God has brought to us. And again, like Acts 2, as we respond to it, we'll be filled with it. Glory be to God. And so today, I trust that you have joined us with an expectation of receiving God's word and for that word becoming life to you and becoming life through you and touching all the people, your family, touching the environment around your life. So let's pray today as we come into this message. Father, we thank you for your presence. We are always so grateful, so thankful for your presence. And we all come with an expectation today to receive your word, for that word to breathe vision, breathe sight, breathe life into each one of our hearts. And Father, that is that life comes into us and we Uh, give attention to it and work with it. We thank you for that light that comes in, that life that comes out into us will begin to work through us and start to be on show through each and every one of our lives. For you've said even in Matthew 6, you want our lives to be an advertisement of your glory to be an advertisement of your blessing and of your increase in each one of our lives. So we thank you. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We thank you that as the word is ministered today, that you bring revelation to our hearts and to our lives. Help us to see what's necessary for our lives individually and for the life of Rhema corporately in Jesus' name. And we honor you, we praise you, but most of all, we acknowledge your presence here with us today in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this teaching. You know, I'm expecting it to take a hold in each one of our lives. You know, John 10.10, Jesus said, I have come. I moved towards you to give you. Well, what did he move towards us to give us? John 10, 10 says he moved towards us to give us life and to give us a life that is more abundantly. You know, one translation says this, I've come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in the fullness until it begins to overflow from you. You know, one of the reasons God wants it to overflow from your life is so that the world out there can begin to see the blessing of God, begin to see the increase of God on your life. They can't see God, but they can see the evidence of God in and on us as believers. Amen. We make the invisible God, uh, we make him real to people. We become the physical representation of an invisible God. You know, the Bible says this too, that he's blessed us. Think about these words, church, today. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. One translation says every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us, lavished upon you, lavished upon me as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father. Isn't that wonderful that God has lavished blessings on us? God, the Father of glory, he wants to bless you and me. He wants to bless his children. And we already know that, like I shared from that song, the blessing, the Lord bless us, the Lord keep us, the Lord's face shine upon us. Oh, glory to God. You know, God's face is always on us. He's always shining on us. You know, his eyes are always on us. He wants to 
do so much through our lives. And the only way he can do that is as we yield to the words that he brings us. You know, we have to treat this sermon as a special word that God is bringing personally to each one of our lives and that we begin to receive it, we begin to acknowledge it, and we begin to expect the manifestation of it in our lives. Glory be to God. And the way that you and I receive, you know, and, and you know we teach that here at Rhema, that God wants us to walk by faith. Remember Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And he wants us to put our faith in the word. He wants our faith in the blessing, in the increase, and he wants us acknowledging that increase every day in our lives. Hallelujah. And most of all, church, He's come, Jesus comes so we'd have a blessed life, an overflowing life, a life where people begin to see there's something different about us than there is about them. And the difference is that we're walking in the blessing of God. We're walking in the life of God. We're walking in the grace of God. We're walking in the increase of God. And every day we're going from glory to glory, from strength to strength for his glory. Well, this morning, as we start taking this journey, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I've been enjoying reading this over the last few days. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 28. Let's just read first from verses 1 to 7. He said, if you listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. So how can we say that? If we listen diligently to this word that God is bringing in this season to each one of us, if we listen diligently to it, being watchful to do it, all his commandments, which he commands us this day, the Lord will set us high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2, and all. He didn't say some of the blessings. He said all the blessings. Underline that in your Bible. All the blessings will come upon you and overtake you. And here's the condition, if Underline that. That's a conditional word. If we heed this word, that it's time for the blessing, it's time for the increase. If we heed the voice of the Lord our God, we'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of our body, the fruit of our ground, the fruit of our beasts, the increase of our cattle and the young and the flock. Blessed shall be our basket and our kneading trough. Blessed shall we be as we come into our days, blessed as we shall be at the close of our days. The the Lord shall cause any enemy that's risen against you to be defeated before your face. They may come out against you one way, but they will flee before you seven ways. Church is talking in this scripture. If we break down in the verses there, he said the fruit of our body will be blessed. What does that mean? Your children are blessed. Your grandchildren are blessed. Hallelujah. And you know, we need to make sure that we tell them that they're blessed. We need to, to enforce that to them. We need to be acknowledging that in our prayer time, but over their lives. Did you know you're blessed? That the blessing of God that's on your father and I is on you. We're blessed by the God most high. Our children are blessed and our grandchildren blessed. And then in verse eight, listen to what he says here. He says, and the Lord shall command, say command, he shall command blessings upon your storehouse and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given to you. So the Lord has commanded blessings to be on our lives. Glory be to God. We should be walking around every day telling people, I'm blessed. 
Hallelujah. I've got the commanded blessings of God working on my life. And he said, the blessings will be on your storehouse, on your saving account. So we know that God is breathing on our finances, that when we give of our tithes, when we give of our offerings, you know what? He begins to breathe on that. He opens opportunities to us. He opens wells around our life so that the increase, the blessing of the tithe, the blessing of giving is coming onto our lives. Hallelujah. And he says he's commanded those blessings too to come on every everything you put your hand to. Hallelujah. You know, I was reading that yesterday morning. I looked at my hands and went, wow, my hands blessed. They're blessed. My hands are blessed. And wherever I put them, the blessing on my hands is coming on those people or the things that I'm engaged in. You know, we have a right to the blessings because of redemption, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We have a right to walk in all the blessings of God. Blessed when we come into our days. Blessed when we come to the close of that day. Blessed when we go to sleep at night. That our bodies begin to rest. Our soul begins to rest. And in that rest time, our bodies are, are being ministered to, refreshed for the following day. Glory be to God. We're blessed blessed. Our finances are blessed. Our family is blessed. Everything that we put our hands to is blessed. And these blessings that we're beginning to acknowledge are coming on us and overtaking us. And you know the reason God wants them to overtake us? Because we're blessed to be a blessing. Glory be to God. God wants us to be a blessing. He wants us to show, be a living advertisement of his blessings that we're walking in. We're blessed. And you know, again, you know, just when we talk about increase or blessing, we're not just talking about money, even though money is a part of the blessing of God. That's not our whole focus. We're blessed in our spirit because our spirit's been awakened unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's woke up to righteousness and we're alive unto God. We've got a strong and a healthy spirit and we're blessed. We're blessed in our soul, that our mind, our will, our emotions, it's not like the world. It's not up and down and in and out. We're walking stable because of the blessing of God upon our mind, our will, our emotions in Jesus' name. We're blessed in our body, blessed in Internally, where everything is working, working in peace internally in our body, working in peace externally in our body, that we can run and not get weary. We can walk and not even faint because of the blessing of God upon our life. We're blessed financially because we have a God that supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Wow, church, that's so exciting when you think about that. We're blessed in so many areas of our life, blessed financially. The God opens the treasury and he pours out, Deuteronomy says, blessings over our lives, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially. Do you know I was sharing last week that you're really blessed even if you've only got a handful of loyal, faithful friends in your life? That's a blessing of God that even if you make mistakes, those faithful, loyal friends, they stand with you. They're always there. They don't leave you. And that you become a loyal friend. That's a blessing in every area of our lives. Glory be to God. I'm so thankful for that, that God has commanded blessings upon me. And Father, that those blessings on me come upon uh, the generations that's following 
Pastor John and I and our family, the blessings, the commanded blessings coming on all the people in our churches, coming on their lives, the commanded blessings coming on those that tithe, coming on those that give. Father, we're agreeing with your word over all the people in our ministries. I'm agreeing with your word over my children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, that they're blessed, Father, and that the blessings that overtake our lives will overtake theirs. And they'll be like Solomon, even more blessed than his father David, in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Well, let's go to verse 9. This is so good, isn't it? I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad that I get. I feel blessed to be sharing the blessings with you today. So verse 9 says this, And the Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself, as he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Look at this very important verse. That all the people of the earth will see. They'll see the blessings of God. They'll see the increase of God. They'll see the peace of God that's on you, regardless of what's going on in the world. They see something on you that they haven't got, that all the people of the air shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord, and they shall be in awe of you. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, the livestock, your ground in the land which the Lord swore to give to swore to your fathers to give you. Listen to this. And the Lord shall open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give rain on your land. Father, thank you. Thank you for an open heaven over our lives that gives rain the rains of increase, the rains of your blessing over every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we want the world to see the evidence of your blessings, the evidence of your increase, the evidence of your joy and your peace and your love working in us because we have something that the world doesn't have. And the world can't take it from us because you've given it to us. Hallelujah. We want them to see you in us. Glory be to God. Thank you for the heavens opening over our lives in Jesus' name. And it says to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not need to borrow. Verse 13, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only. You shall not be beneath if you heed, or you can say because you heed the word of the Lord that God has commanded you this day and you are watchful to do it. Hallelujah. We're watchful to receive it by faith. Welcome it into our hearts. Begin to work with it. Acknowledge it so it starts to work in us. You know something? You can't see any evidence outwardly till it's first core inwardly in each one of our lives. Isaiah 54, we're not going to turn there because of time, but I want you, you can read from verse 2. It talks about enlarging the, the pegs of your tent, enlarging your tent. But, you know, the Lord said to me, we need to enlarge our thinking. We need to enlarge our believing. And enlarge means to make more room. It means to expand. It means to think bigger, to be stretching out bigger than you ever have before for these blessings to come on your life. You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I'm okay the way I am. Well, that's a, that's a blessing if you are, but still stretch out for more, still believe for more, still, it, what did he say? He said, enlarge yourself for more. Why? Because even if you feel like, well, I've got what I need, let's stretch out for it for the church. Let's stretch out for it for the food program, the missions program in, in Africa. Let's stretched out to give to people in need. You know, we've always got to be stretching out. 
Glory be to God, you know, and as we walk by faith, live by faith, we begin to unleash a supernatural dynamic as we begin to make a, a, a stretch in our faith for this. Glory be to God. Wouldn't it be good to buy someone a house, to buy someone a car, to, to help maybe a young couple uh, pay for a child at school. I mean, it's not just even wanting to be blessed. We want them to come on us and overtake us because we want to say to someone, I want to pay for all your food this week. <gasps> How can you do that? Because of God's blessing on my life. And now he wants to bless your life. And so we're becoming a living advertisement of the blessings of God. And that's exactly what God wants in the earth. Amen. The Bible talks about acknowledging every good thing in us. We should be acknowledging them, the blessings, the increase of God when we get up in the morning, when we're walking through the day, even at the close of the day. Father, thank you. You said I'm blessed when I come into my day. I'm blessed at the close of it. So I thank you as I lay down to sleep tonight. My sleep is blessed. My soul is at rest. My body is at rest. And I thank you that it's being replenished even while I I sleep to be able to get up stronger tomorrow morning. Glory be to God. So we must be constantly acknowledging every good thing that is in our lives. Hallelujah. And you know, as we do, you begin to expand your capacity for those blessings to flow because we've got to be building them, increasing the blessing, enlarging them. Where have we got to enlarge them first? In our heart. We've got to feed our faith on the blessings of God and build an expectation that we fully expect something good to come out of those blessings every day. Remember Oral Roberts? You know, he got into trouble off people because he used to say, I believe for something good to happen today. I believe for miracles today. And people didn't like it. But I'm believing for miracles every day. I'm believing for something good to happen. Glory be to God. And we've got to, remember I called this last week, feeding our faith. We've got to feed our faith on the blessings of God. If you don't feed your faith on the blessings, there's no expansion of them on the inside of you. There's no building expectation inside of you. So it's feeding your faith with the word that God has given us, feeding on the blessings, feeding on the increase of God till all you talk about, till all you think about, till all you dream about is the blessings and the increase of God in your life. Hallelujah, that we're like Abraham. We hold into the promises of God. We're holding to the increase of God. We, we believe it every single day of our lives. So we said in Isaiah 54, he said, you've got to enlarge your thinking. You've got to stretch out now more than you've ever stretched out before. We're stretching out for more. Why? Because we just don't want the blessings operating in us. We want the blessings of God flowing through us so that we can pay a car off for someone, so that we can give them money to buy food if they've run out of money and say, and when they say to you, why? This is the blessing of God on my life and he wants it on your life right now. And he's getting all the glory. So you've got to spend time in the blessings. They're not just going to fall on you, church. You've got to give attention. What does he say in Proverbs 4? My son, give attention to my word. What is the word in this season? The blessing, the increase of God. Why would I do that, Father? He said, so that that, that will bring life to you and then life through you to the generations that follow you in your family line, but life to people around you that you can be a blessing to. Hallelujah. So God is telling us, increase your ability to receive. And our faith increases our ability to receive when we begin to feed it. Feed it on this. Begin to feed it. Oh, Father, thank you that you open your good treasury. 
and you pour out the rains over my land. I thank you, Father, that I'm standing right now in you in a place of increase, in a place of blessing, that the blessings are raining down on my life. They're raining on my life. The increase of God is expanding in my life, on my life, and around my life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that as those blessings are moving on me, that they can move through me and that I can be a blessing to other people's lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You've got to feed your faith, church. They're not going to just drop on you. You've got to feed it. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Because they're going to be life. They're going to be blessing. They're going to be increased to you. Glory be to God. I want you to turn this morning to Luke chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So let's go to Luke chapter 5. And let's have a look from verses 1 to 5. It says, Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God. So you know what that's telling us? When the word is being ministered, we need to press. We press into it. We press in to draw, to drink, to receive in Jesus' name. They were pressing in to hear the message of God. He was standing by the lake or the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets and getting into one of the boats that belonged to Simon Peter, Jesus requested him to draw away a little from the shore. Then he sat down and continued to teach the crowd of people from that boat. Oh, wow, Father, I can see something new in that. Yeah. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep and lower your nets for a haul. And Simon Peter answered, Master, we toiled all night exhaustedly and caught nothing in our nets. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. Now, why did I share that with you? Well, before a miracle could happen for Peter, before he could see the increase of God for it to take place for Peter, Jesus had to teach him first. He had to teach before the miracle took place. And if you notice in the Gospels, it says that he went about teaching, preaching, and then the healings, then the miracles, then the signs and wonders. Why didn't he just say to Peter, why didn't he just say to him, Peter, just go and cast your nets out again on the other side and you'll get all that, a catch there. Well, think about this. Peter had been fishing all night. He caught nothing. He's tired, he's hungry, and Peter may have responded to Jesus at that moment by saying, no, Lord, I'm not going out there again. I'm going to go home, I'm going to have breakfast, and I'm going to get some sleep. He wouldn't have been able to receive. Why? Because he toiled all night. He was exhausted, and on top of that, he caught nothing. Now, isn't it interesting of all the boats that were there? He told Simon to bring out his boat and he got in Simon Peter's boat with him and he begins to teach the word of God. Why was he teaching from that boat? Why was he teaching from Simon Peter's boat? Well, the teaching was to expand Peter to receive. Are you listening to me? That's why God has us teaching this word, because he wants us to expand our expectation in the blessings and the increase of God. It was to expand Peter, so Peter's expectation, because right there and then, Peter had no expectation. He toiled all night. He caught nothing. And all he is now is tired. Maybe he was even a bit grumpy. <laughs> and he wanted to go home and sleep and have some breakfast. But God was, Jesus was teaching him 
the word of God. Why was he doing that? And why is he doing it to us right now? Because he wants to stir up our faith. He wanted to stir up an expectation in Peter so that when he told Peter to drop his nets again, Peter would drop those nets. Amen. Regardless of what had happened or not happened the night before, he would drop those nets. Glory to God. And the teaching was to expand him, to stir up faith in him. God says it's time church for increase it's time for the blessing and our thinking's got to be enlarged to the increase and have an ability then to be able to receive what God is wanting us to receive in in this season in our life he wants us just like Peter he wants our attention on the word because the word begins to expand you because it's alive and active. Because, you know, as soon as we hear, and especially right now, when we hear on increase or we hear on the blessing, do you know what we immediately think? Pastor, are you not aware of what's going on out there? The economy of our nation, the lack of jobs in our nation, are you not aware of that? Well, we don't really live by the economy of our nation. We live by every word that comes from God. And so God is trying to draw, and he's done it by the song, the blessing that came out. He's doing it by the teaching that's come out. And he's trying to draw our attention away from that, put it on the word so that the blessing and the increase can start flowing through our lives, that we receive our breakthrough. So we've got to enlarge our thinking so that we can be enlarged in every area in our life. And you know something, church? You know what? He has to expand us inside before we ever get expanded outside. And if you are not expanded inside on the blessings, the increase, or it may be for healing for you. If there's no expansion on the inside, there's no expansion on the outside because God works on the inside. And you've got a great example of that with Peter. He's exhausted. He toiled all night. If Jesus had brought a word to him right there, just go and put your, your nets out, Peter would not have responded because he'd have gone by the economy, there was no fish out there. But Jesus began to teach him the word, teach the people the word. What was happening when he was teaching? Faith was coming. Faith was coming to them. And when Jesus said, go and lower your nets, what did Peter respond? Well, we toiled all night and caught nothing, but on the ground now of your word, I will lower my nets again. Glory be to God. And it's time now to be enlarged in the increase in the blessing of God so it expands us, so that we have an expectancy for it. Glory to God, so that our capacity to receive it begins to increase in our life and we go beyond beyond our previous expectation in Jesus' name. He says in Genesis, will you listen to this this morning? He says in Genesis 12 too, I will bless you with an abundant increase of favors. So we need to be focused on those promises and let them begin to increase our hearts, increase our expectation, expand us and stretch us out to believe. Do you know, sometimes we stay at this same place of believing for the very small things and we're happy with the crumbs that fall from the table. But we need to, to press out with a greater expectation. Amen. Press out and, and believe God for those blessings to come into your life. And again, before you experience them on the outside, they've got to have enlarged you on the inside. Hallelujah. You know, as we come into a close this morning, I want you to encourage you right now to begin to take the limits off church. Don't limit the Holy One. Take the limits off. You know, 
We press in, don't we, with our tithe and our offering. Every time you give it, have an expectation that something good's going to come out of your response to God in tithes and offerings. Believe every time that you give into a project of God in your church or in life. Believe that something good is going to come to your life. Believe in the blessings of God. Believe in them and start to, Father, thank you. Start acknowledging them every single day and allow God's word to enlarge you. Hallelujah. You know, we've got to prepare now. And I really believe this message is so important and the timing of the message. You know, God always has times and seasons and it's a, a time for this message right now. So if you want to get ready for a new way of living, you've got to change the old way of thinking. Amen. You can't move forward with yesterday's thinking. If you want a new way of living, you've got to change your old way of thinking in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says without vision, you'll perish. You've got to have a vision. That vision's only going to come. That light's only going to come as you begin to embrace the word on the blessing, on the increase. Why? Because inside the word is the light. The entrance of that word as you begin to focus on it is going to open your heart to the blessings, expand your heart to the blessings. Soon as it gets in your heart, it's going to come out your mouth I'm telling you, and you're going to start experiencing change. And that's why we pray, and that's what we're going to do right now. Father, I ask you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation for each one of us that will cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. Lord, I'm asking you to bring illumination to our hearts so that we can see more than we've ever seen before. That, that, Father, that we begin to reach out with a greater faith expectancy than we've ever had before in Jesus' name. We thank you that you said the Lord does bless us and keep us and makes his face shine upon us. We thank you for the blessings of the Lord, Father, that make each one of us truly rich, rich spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, and you add no hard toil to it in Jesus' name. Father, we believe that you're opening Open in the heavens over us. And we thank you for the rains of your blessing coming down on our lives. The, 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 the increase of God expanding our lives, expanding us in every area of our lives. Father, not only that we can walk in the blessings, but we can be a blessing wherever we go and demonstrate those blessings into people's lives in Jesus name so we thank you for illumination we thank you for impartation into our hearts by the Holy Ghost today we thank you Father that each time that we go in to the blessings of God to the increase of God in your word we thank you that that word is coming into us it's expanding us and causing us to be expectant to see the blessings in front, behind, and each side of our lives in Jesus' name, that we are truly blessed of the Father of glory in Jesus' name. We acknowledge them. We thank you for them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I do see that right now, Father. There's someone having a problem with um, their leg and I see it more behind the knee and going down the calf of your leg. And if that's you right now, I want you to stretch out and say, I believe that I receive my healing. <clears throat> right now in the name of Jesus. In fact, I put my hand on my leg right now and we command 
healing into that leg in the name of Jesus, that it's free. Father, we thank you for the healing bar Gilead touching it right now in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Yeah, I can see that too. Someone's elbow, you've been having problems with your elbow. It's been hurting when you move your arm. Well, I want you to just hold it right now like that. Put your hand on it. And in the name of Jesus, we command a release in that elbow. We command healing to flow into that elbow and through into that arm in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that we're redeemed from the curse of the law. We're redeemed to the blessing of God, the blessing in our body, the blessing in our bones, the blessing in our muscles, the blessing in the tissue, the blessing in our eyes, the blessings touching every part of our lives from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, I thank you for the blessing of God. I thank you that we We've been legally, legally through the blood of Jesus, redeemed from the curse. It has no legal rights to our lives. And we've been placed into the blessing of God. And I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. And I come against that anxiety that's been plaguing someone's life in the name of Jesus. We take authority over you. We bind it in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over your soul, over your life in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for a complete deliverance, a complete work. You did a complete work on the cross at Calvary and we call a complete work into that person's life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it right now. Hallelujah. And I thank you. Wow, I'm seeing someone's fingers. (laughs) Oh, I I don't, maybe it's been hard for you to move them, but I'm seeing the fingers. And and, and this is what I'm seeing happening. Wow, the blessing on your fingers, the blessing on your fingers, the blessing on the, the joints, the blessing of movement now in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we speak the blessing right now. We call increase, increase, increase in the name of Jesus. We thank you that, Father, whoever this is, they're freed from the curse of arthritis. They're freed from that curse over the joints, over the movement of their fingers in Jesus' name. And we call a complete healing into the finger, into the joints, into the movement right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Woo! And hearing someone out there right now, you've been having problem with your hearing. We call that opened right now. We call a miracle to your eardrum. We call a miracle to your hearing in Jesus' name. The blessing, it's blessed. God wants you to hear and in hearing, hear. So we thank you right now, right now in the name of Jesus for healing. Oh, Father that that anointing goes right into that eardrum, right in around there, and it does what's necessary to release a complete work in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Wow. Well, if you've joined us today, and you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life. Do you know that's where the true blessing in life comes from? That's where the true increase in life comes from. The one who is the blessing, the one who brings the blessing. When he comes into your life, he changes your life. Everything about your life begins to change. And how do I receive that, Pastor? Well, you ask Jesus, who is the blessing of the Father to us, to come into your life. You say, Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth, that you died, you gave your life for me through your death, through your burial 
through your resurrection. I acknowledge that right now. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to be Lord of my life. Hallelujah. And just as you've asked him right now, he's come in. The blessings come in. Increases come in because he's the one who is the blessing. He is the Lord of the increase. And he's come in as Lord. He's come in as Savior. He's come in as Deliverer into your life. Just when you said, Jesus, come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Hallelujah. That's how easy it is just to ask him to come in. Glory be to God. And if you've just asked him to come into your heart right now and be Lord of your life, please contact us here at Rhema because we want to do everything we can to help you in the journey that you've just engaged in. And we can send you some information that will be able to help you to understand when you ask Jesus to come into your heart what happened in your heart and in your life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for joining us today. And we're expectant that we're going to get great reports back. We want to hear those praise reports. We want to hear what God is doing and has done in each of your lives. And we look forward to, to you joining us at the Eagles prayer meeting on Thursday at 7.30 when we all come together and we receive the word together and then we begin to pray together. And at 7.30 on Thursday, you can join us through Facebook or YouTube and all the information is on the screen. Well, you have a wonderful afternoon today. Have a great rest and we look forward to seeing you next week. Glory be to God. And remember that God loves you. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. One accord. With one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God. It's to our Say it again. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship with one accord.